Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back everybody, I hope you're doing well. My name is Andy with Boatworks Today and this week I'm going to be addressing the question that was probably most common off of last week's video, which was now that I have these frames, these locker frames in place, am I going to be glassing them and if so, how am I going to do that? So with that said, let's get started.
Well, I'm glad I put the paper towel down. <laughs> so good morning. It is the following day. Now, before I get into the sanding part of this, I want to elaborate a little bit more on what we're actually doing here, which is fairing. Now, if you're not real familiar, essentially what, when people talk about fairing something, uh, essentially what you're doing is you're looking to establish just a nice consistent surface, whether it's a nice arch or just an absolute dead flat surface. Now yesterday when you saw me troweling out the, the total fare, you saw me using this little guy. Now again, well this one in particular is made by Flexisander, but again, this is not a paid thing, it's not a sponsored thing. I bought this tool, I paid for it. I'm just passing this information along. But you saw me using this, and essentially what it is, it's a, it's a flexible trowel. And this works, this is like the, one of the, the few things that I can't kind of DIY or you know, fabricate in the shop. I suppose you could, um, but it's, it, it eventually it comes down to a point where well, how much time are you willing to put into creating something when you, know, you can just go out and buy it? You know, it what's, what's more valuable, your time or your money? Especially you know, when you're looking at something, uh, I guess, like this. Now, the reason I, I use this is because I'm looking to make a, basically a nice arched surface, you know, because coming in, I'm trying to blend in the, the, the modification or the addition into the storage locker into the existing, I guess, more along the, the outside perimeter of the deck. And this deck has an arch to it. So coming in with a flat trowel uh, isn't going to work too well. This, on the other hand, you know, when I'm able to actually put it up on edge and trowel it, it established the arch for me. Now, for years, I used this. This is just a regular old, I don't know what you actually call it, like a, a drywall mudding trowel. And for years, this will work, except it's gonna take a lot more applications to get the surface where you want it, versus using something like this that's able to conform to your surface. And the reason being, and we'll just kinda look at this uh, example here uh, in point. When I, when I did the dishing for laying in the glass, so I put the glass in, and so now what I was left with, I still had a little bit of a low spot uh, right where I laid the glass, which is fine, you know, because I want to be able to get some fairing over top of that so it's staying smooth and I don't have any pitting or anything like that. But what happens when you're, when you're using something like this on a surface where it has basically two high points on each end, and then you're trying to fill in the center, what happens is that these, these wings are flexible. You know, hopefully you, you can, kind of pick this up here, but this is flexible. And what happens is that these two edges ride up on the high points and this, the middle that you're trying to actually fill in, that actually becomes the low point now. So for, for filling and fairing, uh, I guess for applying the, the, the compound, uh, something like this, it works, it's just not very efficient. Um, it is a, a fairly inexpensive option, but it's not as good as something like this, in my opinion. Now, this there are other companies other than FlexiSander that makes things like this, and they make other sizes as well. This one, I believe, is, what, 18 inches, 16, 18 inches, give or take, and they make larger ones. Now, what I find, and I'm just gonna be referring to this company in particular because this is what I'm familiar with, but as far as the options that they offer, they make, you know, this is their smallest one, they make some that are upwards of almost four, three and a half, four feet long, I think. And basically what I found is that when you, when you start to get much larger than this, it, it becomes difficult to manage. Because I mean, your fairing compound, it's a fairly thick material. And when you're trying to work a thick material and get it laid down, you know, fairly consistent, fairly even, uh, it takes a lot of arm strength, which, you know, I'm no Hercules, at least not anymore. <laughs> Uh, after 10 years, I'm finally going in on Monday to, uh, to have my shoulders looked at initially, just to kind of find out what's been going on, but um, yeah, that's another topic for another day. But when you start getting too much larger than this, it just becomes a little unwieldy, a little bit difficult to handle. So I guess if this is a, a, an option that you're curious and, and interested in looking into, uh, I believe they, I think this is like their 16 or 18, I believe they also go up to like a 22.5, which, well, it's this size. This is pushing the limits of my shoulders. And if you're gonna be using this for any extended period of time, uh, this would eventually push the length or the push your shoulders as well. Now, that's for applying the material. And like I said, this is an option that it's, it would be pretty difficult to actually DIY you know, in, in your shop or in your garage. Just because there's, a, even though it looks fairly simple, uh, there's a fair amount going on here with the design and getting the right stiffness of this plate and whatever. So I, I guess, you know, 
is it worth buy, spending the money on this to, to actually get it? I think so, you know, but that's, that's just my opinion. Now, that's applying the material. So after, it's, after you've got the, uh, the compound down, now you need to sand it. Now, this is something that you can absolutely DIY. Um, for this, what I'm going to be using, it's basically it's an electric version of that thing. Now, this, the only reason I have this is because I do an awful lot of sanding. Most DIY people, or if you're doing like a one-off project, that's going to be pretty difficult to justify. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to be perfectly honest on that. Uh, they also make manual ones, you know, which is what this is. Now, this, this I could see justifying, you know, spending the money on, uh, just because this, uh, this particular size, I think it's 22 and a half, this has a lot of flexibility. Um, no pun intended. <laughs> but this one gives you the option uh, for fairing, so like I mentioned, for fairing, you're either looking to establish a nice, even arch or just a dead flat surface. Now, one thing that this one is able to do is it has a kind of an insert here that can lock in and keep the surface of this absolutely dead flat. You take it out, now you've got your flexible, you've got a flexible sander for doing arches. Now, th these are things that I just got within the past year or so. And again, for years, I didn't have these. I didn't have access to these. What I did, or what I've used, was just this. And this is something that I made. It took me about all of 15 minutes to make. And it's just a quarter inch piece of plywood. And I just kind of <laughs> roughly uh, cut out some handles and kind of epoxied them on here. But this, this is flexible and it's fairly stiff. So this can do both flat surfaces as well as long arch. And it's light, very, very light. But you don't have to buy these fancy things. You can still DIY, for the most part, you can still DIY a lot of these things that you need for doing a good fairing job. The one exception, as I mentioned, would be when you're applying the material. I do think that something like this uh, for applying it is worth the money. As far as sanding, you know, if you're on a budget, something like this will work perfectly fine and get the job done beautifully. Part, all the sanding is done and everything looks good it f and it feels good. That's the most important thing. If you can run your hand over it and you don't feel any, you know, kind of wobbles or whoopsies, uh, then it's good. I do, however, have a couple of little touch-ups I need to do. You know, these are just basically low spots. So I've got one there and really that's it on the, uh, on the port side. Now the starboard side, uh, again, kind of same general area. A couple little low spots there. Little, uh, that I could probably sand out. So I'll probably just be able to sand that out. And then the biggest one is just right in here. And to be honest, that's, that's pretty typical. Very, very, well, hardly ever <laughs> does it ever happen that you're able to get the, f the fairing done basically perfect in one shot. It usually takes at least two, typically three to four uh, rounds of uh, applying fairing. You know, lay it up, knock it down, lay it back up, so on and so forth. So. To be at this point after just one, uh, after just one application, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's a win. Yep, I'd say it's definitely a win. I've done smaller jobs that has taken <laughs> way more rounds than this, so I, I, I will take it. <laughs> so these smaller touch-ups, I think I'm just going to take care of off the camera because it's already Friday afternoon and I need to start this edit. And if I lay up any touch-ups now, it won't be until tomorrow that I can actually come back and do anything more with it. So I'm at these little spots, I'm just going to take care of. Now, I do want to kind of make one little note here. Uh, when, we were, when I was initially trawling out the, uh, the, the fairing compound, you know, I suggested using this, this guy. 
Uh, th th this is primarily just to establish the shape, right? But now since the, the shape is pr pretty much established, I don't need to use that longer trowel for doing these little touch-ups. I can really use anything. I could use, you know, one of these little plastic spatula things or what I'll probably end up using is this little six inch, you know, metal one. So because the shape is already established, all I'm doing is just kind of filling in low spots and I can, I can be a little bit heavier when I lay down the compound because it's a small area, quick sanding, easy fix. So with that said, I think I'm end this video here. Now I hope you enjoyed this and if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that little subscribe button and the little notification bell. I think it's down over here. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week when I think we're going to be start uh, getting the new bulkheads cut and put in. So uh, I haven't 100% decided, but I think that's the direction I'm leaning. I haven't figured out what I want to do with this larger well that I'm standing in, not yet. So I, rather than just kind of holding things up, I'm going to pass over this for the time being and I think I'm going to get the bulkheads in so I can actually uh, start doing some stuff up on deck without the deck <coughs> caving in on me. So uh, have a great night, have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.